Now that we've outlined what's happening at the market equilibrium, it's time to start to examine the impact of a price floor on the market. We'll begin in part C with a price floor at 60, which actually will have no effect on the market. That's because, remember, a price floor is a minimum allowable price, meaning that the price in this market is not allowed to drop below 60. But that won't constrain our market equilibrium in this case as the market equilibrium price is 80. Since the equilibrium price is already higher than the price floor, then the price floor will be non-binding and there will be no effect on the market. The market will remain at equilibrium. However, if the equilibrium pr price falls below the price floor, that's not legal anymore and there will be an effect on the price and the market. So in part D, we say, now suppose the government institutes a price floor at 100. This will constrain the market so that the price cannot drop below 100. And we will have a new quantity demanded and quantity supplied within the market. To find the new quantities, we simply take our price, 100, and plug it into our demand equation and the supply equation. So for demand, we can see that at a price of 100, the quantity demanded will be 50, which is of course lower than the quantity demanded at the market equilibrium since the price has gone up, of course people will buy less, and when we plug 100 into the supply equation, we can see that the quantity supplied has increased as the price has increased. The question is asking, what quantity is exchanged? If 50 people want to purchase the good and there are 80 units for sale, how many trades will actually occur? Remember that trade must always be mutually beneficial. Just because you have something for sale doesn't mean someone's gonna buy it. So the lower of these two quantities will always be the quantity that's actually exchanged in the market. So our new quantity that's being exchanged here will be 50. In the next video, we'll examine how this impacts surplus.